All right, we got the Max Jacks crate. Had it delivered to my office. Loaded it into my uh, Ford Expedition with a forklift. But it fit. Shipping documents say it weighs a thousand pounds, so I'm gonna try to get it out of there with my engine hoist. We'll see if I can lift it up high enough and then drive the car out from under it. If that doesn't work, we'll just have to tear the crate apart and pull it out piece by piece. But anyway, let's get it going, see if we can do this. All right, I'm working on a Max Jax. Let's see it from this side. Max Jax lift install. I'm not really gonna do a full install video because there's plenty of those, but I'm gonna show some things that have given me complications or that I think people should know about. Um, my concrete, the spec was, you know, the PSI was good enough. It was supposed to be deep enough, but I wasn't 100% certain. Um, so I marked it, drilled the holes. This one took and the anchors that come with the kit uh, set it set properly and uh, I got plenty of torque on that one. So that one I'm comfortable with. Over here, it turns out my concrete was too, too uh, thin and uh, only two of the anchors over here I'm comfortable with. Um, this one and this one. This one came up just a hair, but I'm, I'm comfortable with it. It torqued all right, it didn't spin. Uh, these other three, uh, that one there, and then these two, um, they didn't set. And uh, they came up too far. They would just spin um, in the hole. Uh, I cleaned them properly. Everybody talks about how they you know, have trouble with them. Uh, I drilled them with a really nice bit. Um, start out with one of these. Got it off of Amazon. Thought I could get away with that. Horrible wouldn't even hardly penetrate. I spent probably five minutes or so trying to drill. I barely got down maybe three quarters of an inch. 
and I thought I could use this little hammer drill that I had. This is a hammer drill. What is it? 5.5 amp. Wouldn't do anything. So um, I got frustrated because I just worked and worked and wouldn't do anything. So I got on Amazon. I tracked this one down. Go ahead and open it. This thing with that nicer bit, which I'll show you in a minute, was awesome. It went right through the concrete, made a super clean hole. So there's the bit I found. It's from Diablo. It's called a uh, rebar demon or something like that. But this thing was awesome. And with that shape of that um, tip, it made it sit really super flat. It didn't skate around. It didn't push my lift side to side as I was going through the hole. And uh, I also got this. What is this? 12 amp or 12 and a half amp. Um, I have an off-brand, but it had decent reviews. In Inarco, Inarco. I don't know, but anyway, it does drill and hammer. It's like a jackhammer, but this thing was awesome. Uh, I think it was right around 100 bucks on Amazon. This bit was, I think, 30, 40 bucks, something like that. Um, I'll put some links in the video below, but uh, this thing made the job super easy, Went right through, drilled awesome. So the holes I ended up with were great, but. Turns out I got um, too thin of uh, concrete on the one side. I was concerned about it, but um, I was hoping. I was hopeful that it would be all right, but it just wouldn't set, and I wasn't comfortable using the lift with the anchors as loose as they were. So anyway, the only way you can get them out of there, or get them out of the way, rather, um, is to hammer them back down through the hole. So these two have already hammered back down through and I, I went ahead and bought the, the uh, bend pack Kit for the epoxy, but I only need a few of these so I decided to sacrifice one They're kind of expensive, but I sacrificed one to be my punch So I put it in there and I hammered the thing down. I still got to do this one but I had to hammer it all the way down through into my uh, into the foundation below so they're down into the dirt um, I don't know if I'll be able to get a shot of the inside of my hole, but once I got that thing pushed out of there, um, uh, see if you can see it at all. Eh, not so much. Let's see how about if I turn the light on. Yeah, can't see the bottom of the hole, but anyway, I can see now that, uh, my concrete, you can kind of see it there. See the dirt down the bottom, but it's just not quite deep enough. The concrete wasn't quite enough to grab. So, but and I've got kind of a hole in there, and I've got a these epoxy uh, anchors. You gotta, I'm hitting the dirt, so I've got to figure out how to suck some of that dirt out of there and the broken concrete. This one, I got some broken concrete in the bottom of it. Uh, but as I was saying, after I drilled these holes, I blew them out with compressed air, I vacuumed them, uh, I even got a nylon brush, swabbed them out, got a little bit of water, squirted in there and scrubbed them. I made sure they were super clean because that was one of the biggest complaints that I saw was that people didn't clean them well and the powdered uh, concrete from drilling and not cleaning them out properly would make them slide out. So I was really, really particular about making sure it was clean good. So my problem is just that this concrete's just too thin in this section so unfortunately so I had to buy this is like 200 and something bucks I think with shipping and everything this uh, epoxy anchor set was like 230 something bucks so that was a bummer but you get uh, eight more anchors so I got plenty of spares but and then you get this epoxy stuff uh, I did read one review on the Ben or the Max Jacks website said that uh, the stuff set up before he could get them in but reading his post, I don't know what he was thinking. He squirted the epoxy all in first and then thought he could go back and pound these things in. So before he even got like two or three of them pounded in after squirting in all the um, epoxy, it was already setting up. So you need, to, you need to squirt the epoxy into one, set that one, then move on to the next one. Don't 
try to squirt all your epoxy at once. That's I'm guessing what's his what his issue was. But uh, uh, so that's what I'm going to do. But unfortunately, I've got a cavity in there. I don't know if I'm going to have enough epoxy. If that cavity is too open in that hole, it might use up too much epoxy to fill it up far enough to where it sets. So I'm going to I got to figure that out. But. I'm going to put this project on hold because I just realized I don't have a caulking gun to push on both of these plungers at the same time. So this is the adhesive it comes with. All right, it's been a couple of days. I found what I believe will work. Uh, I got off Amazon. There was a few, but this was the one I could get the quickest. Label it as a DC 600 dual component applicator. Um, took some doing. When I was looking at them on my cell phone, I couldn't see you know the details well enough this one has different sized little plungers but i think that it's going to work without any plunger because i was initially thinking it wouldn't work because this little even the small plunger here won't fit in that tiny hole but what it can do is um just this one plunger here with no tip on it will go down inside of that 
one and plus it. So that's what I'm counting on. out those are for smaller tubes I guess so let's see if this is gonna work so I'm gonna put it in there like that push it in yeah so that that plunger lines up in that hole this one here with no tip on it there's not even a screw end in that one it looks like that will line up at the center of that and that should push both of my, I can see it filling in that. That's good. There it comes. There's our stuff. That might be enough though. Let's give it a shot. If that's full enough, let's go for it. more in there. It says you want it to squirt up through the top so I didn't have enough. It's probably not filling up that cavity in there. Let's see what it does there. Oh yeah, that's too much. Oh shoot. <laughs> So, see how much I can get out of there. Jeez. If you had a straight hole through concrete without that open cavity at the bottom, I'm sure it would work a lot better. Because then it wouldn't be such a guessing game of how much epoxy to get in there. What a mess. Assuming I can thread that out, so maybe I'll try to shove some of this epoxy in the next hole so I don't waste it. But I'm not sure if after I've started using this, if I'll be able to use this epoxy ever again, anyways. But we'll give it a go. All right. Yeah, with as big as the holes I had, that used up the entire tube for two of those. All right, it's been another day, and now I've got another tube of anchoring adhesive. Uh, I found some stuff that would fit in a standard caulking gun. This is a Sika Pro Select um, Sika Anchor Fix 2. Uh, there was a number one that was a more of a... Uh, lightweight the, the number two is supposed to be so for heavy duty super strength anchoring adhesive so i just got to do the one hole so this should be enough was 
video it said pump this out and you get a even mix. See how it's black now it turned gray. So I'm gonna go for it. Well, I hope that's enough. It didn't squirt out like I had hoped. Just got my Max Jacks installed. Gonna try lifting my Evo 9 with it. Um, I only have a 15 amp outlet in this garage right now. I did already lift uh, the little uh, Geo Tracker over there. It weighs 2,200 pounds. Uh, it was pulling 8 amps from the hydraulic pump. This car weighs about 1,000 pounds more, so I'm curious how much the uh, or how many amps the an extra 1,000 pounds will draw on this pump. Uh, if we get up over 15 amps or up close to 15 amps, we're going to need to get that 20 amp outlet installed. But anyway, let's give this a shot.
is the heaviest vehicle I've put on the Max Jack so far. The Max Jack has the uh, 6,000 pound limit. This, uh, the uh, spec on this is just under 6,000 pounds, so uh, we'll see. I did have to put the extensions all the way out, and just lifting up smaller cars, I've noticed you know there is some wobble to it when you've got the uh, the jack arms extended all the way out. So we'll see how stable it is with this extra weight on there. Um, and I'm also going to put the uh, amp meter on it. Um, I know when I was looking at them, I couldn't find any specifications on how many amps it actually took. So I've been checking the amperage draw, lifting up smaller cars. Now this is the, basically the limit of the jack. I'm curious how many amps it'll pull um, from the 120 volt outlet when we're jacking it up. So let's put it up. Uh, I'll get, get the jack situated, and then I'll let you see the amp meter as I'm jacking it up. So 10.8, 10.9 amps. And let's see if there's a voltage drop when I'm doing that. A little bit. So definitely uh, biggest load for sure by a couple of amps. So if anybody's curious about the amp draw to at its limit. Specification called for 20 amp circuit, but so far that's the highest amps I've seen out of it. It's 10.8 amps, 10.9 amps. So I don't think you absolutely require a 20 amp circuit. This is only a 15 amp breaker. Um, so it seems okay. So if anybody's curious about that, there you go. Now you have the information. Um, Expedition EL uh, anti batter model all the way to the top. Uh, didn't hit the roof. I did have to put the garage door down. But uh, what do I got? I think I got the 10 foot ceilings. I think we'll get some numbers here if anybody's curious. ceiling's about 10 foot 4 inches tall. Uh, this is all the way up. I've got the shorter, uh, what are they, like 3 inches, 2 and a half inch uh, risers. Uh, I don't know if I could fit the uh, taller 7.5 ones on there, or 6, six inch ones, because I do have the 6 inch ones. Um, this is the first time I've used the uh, the frame cradles, but they work pretty good. There's the frame cradles. Um, the jack point is actually supposed to be here, so I'm not quite back to that. And then the front jack point 
I'm pretty much right on it. So that one's fine. Um, if I had my jack, uh, the, the, the posts mounted a little closer together, I could probably reach the actual jack point. I don't think that's a big deal. I figured it was better to have it towards the front just because the motor and everything. So, anyway. I've been a little leery about putting this on there just because it's up almost 6,000 pounds, but it's handling it all right. Um, like I said, I do have the taller um, posts. I haven't used those on anything yet, but um, let me measure for you so you can see how tall it is to the bottom of the vehicle. So the jacks are currently sitting on the, the stocks. They're at 41 inches. At 41 inches to the lowest part here. Uh, bottom of the frame about 47 inches. Three, four and a half inches off the ground to the tire. Uh, let me show you the ceiling. If I can get it up that high. So, I think I've showed you this before, but if I haven't posted that video yet, I didn't move my garage door opener. Uh, it used to be centered, like most garage doors are, but you can, uh, I moved it over. So I'm giving the clearance, I'm glad I did, because I wouldn't be able, even the smaller cars, I wouldn't be able to get them up there that far without that. So, let me get some better lighting here. Plug in my light. All right, so. Put the tight squeeze. But I got it in there, I got it all the way up. So there you go. Anybody wonder if, if it'll actually handle 6,000 pounds? Definitely seems to handle it okay. Seems to be working fine off of one uh, 15 volt or 15 amp outlet or circuit. So, all right.